welcome to Diecast Restos. I'm Jason and this is a Matchbox Rollomatics 20E Police Patrol. It entered the Matchbox mainline in 1975 and ran until 1984. It's clearly based on a first generation classic Range Rover. I wonder whether its name is due to a licensing issue. However, later Universal Toys products did have the Range Rover name printed on the boxes. Here's how my 1983-84 model looks when brand new. Being part of the Rollomatics lineup, the police patrol had a moving action. Lugs on the rear wheels turned gears which in turn rotated the rooftop beacon. This wasn't working on my model. I'll need to fix this during my restoration today. The casting was introduced in a white police livery in 1975. This had the red beacon and red stripe decals with the words police on each side. The bases on these models were unpainted. It remained in the main line in this appearance until 1980, though in 1976 it featured in different guises in the two-pack range and in construction gift sets. It was painted olive green with yellow police decals, olive drab with red cross ambulance decals and red or white with sight engineer decals. In 1981, the mainline model was modified and it now received a blue beacon. The rest of World Release had a new checkerboard police decal, while the US version had county sheriff decals affixed to each side, the bonnet and the roof. It was discontinued for the US from 1982, replaced by the MB95 4x4 Jeep. The rest of World Release was recoloured metallic brown, had a blue roof with 020 decal and Securité, French for security, on the bonnet. The side decals had a checkerboard design with Securité Rally Paris Dakar 83 printed on yellow. These decals continued to be used until the model was discontinued in 1984. It was recoloured to this beige in 1983. This 1983-1984 beige model lost the rooftop decals and could be found with or without the Securité labels on the bonnet. These models had black base plates as had the previous mainline releases since 1981. In 1981, France received its own special Paris Dakar livery. This had a blue body and an unpainted metal base. The decals were yellow backed, applied to both sides and red Securité Rallied Paris Dakar 81. It received a special release in Japan for 1985 in a black and white police livery. It was replaced in the main line by the MB148 Volvo container truck for 1985. The police patrol itself was of course based on the original Range Rover, now referred to as the Classic. The development of the idea really took shape in the late 1950s. Rover were convinced there was a market for a more comfortable 4x4, particularly in areas like Australia and Africa with long journeys being made on undeveloped roads. By the 1960s, the sports utility vehicle had begun to make waves in America, with cars like the International Scout, Jeep Wagoneer and later the Ford Bronco. Under the stewardship of Charles Spencer King, development of the 100-inch station wagon finally started in 1967. The new car would have long travel coil springs and Rover's Buick derived 3.5 litre V8 engine. The carburettors on the V8 would allow for fuel supply even at extreme angles. The new Range Rover was unveiled to the public in 1970. It had a 100 mile per hour top speed, 3.5 tonne towing capacity, hydraulic disc brakes all round and a newly developed 4 speed dual range permanent 4 wheel drive system. Its capabilities were put to the test in 1971 during the three-month 18,000km Trans-American Expedition that drove from Alaska to Cape Horn. In the process, it became one of two vehicles to traverse both American continents north to south through the Darien Gap. The other was a Series 2A Land Rover. The Range Rover was standard, with only a limited number of speciality off-road items. Later feats included winning the four-wheel drive class in the first Paris-Dakar rally in 1979 and also in 1981. Little changed of the Range Rover's visual appearance for the first decade of production. Models were three doors only until 1981. 
The only change of note was a vinyl covering for the C pillar being introduced in the mid 70s. The interiors were simple and utilitarian. They incorporated designer David Batcher's common moulding dashboard, which made changing the vehicle from left to right hand drive production far easier. This same design was also utilised on the Rover SD1 and the Metro in the following years. Five door conversions had been available as an aftermarket modification up until its official release. Until now, the access to the rear seats had been difficult owing to the heavy structural doors. In 1984, the Range Rover received a push towards the higher end of the markets with improved trim, including leather upholstery, an automatic transmission and a more modern fascia with walnut inlays. It had a facelift with a new grille in 1986, alongside some further modernisation. It was renamed the Classic in 1994 with the introduction of its successor, the P38A Range Rover. The Classic continued on in production until 1996. During its 27 years of production, more than 326,000 first generation Range Rovers were built. So here was how my Matchbox Rollermatics Police Patrol model was looking. It was pretty tatty, with torn up stickers, chipped paintwork, scratched plastics and its Rollermatics feature rotating beacon not working. I managed to get that fixed as you'd have seen a moment ago while I was pushing the completed model along. It was quite tricky demonstrating that, hence the fleeting glimpse. But with that mechanical repair aside, let's now see the visual transformation. While the original decals were stickers, the black square decals water slide reproductions do more than an adequate job at replacing them. In fact, they are outstanding, really setting the model off. The Ford beige is a nice match to the sandy looking beige shade Matchbox used. I managed to polish up the window piece a bit, though it was always obscured to a degree to hide the Rollomatics cogs within. The wheels have tidied up well with some fresh trim, and I'm liking the new gloss black base and grille. What do you think of this restoration? And what are your thoughts on the generic but not generic police patrol? Let me know in the comments and let me know if you like my work on this model by leaving the video a like. And of course, do subscribe to keep up to scratch with all of my latest restos and customs. So all that leaves me to say is thank you for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.